Welcome, YouTube. And what today we have on our agenda is to discuss corrosion. What we have here is a steam boiler that we have recently installed, uh, more or less to the piping specifications found in the installation manual. And let me get a close up of the serial model number and rating. So we have one outlet, two inch, goes up and goes up into a two by inch and a half by inch and a half T. We have an inch and a half main going out that way and another inch and a half main going out that way. Goes down to the end. There is an ancient uh, vent stalk, which we've replaced the mains about six years ago, the main vents about six years ago. And then there's this uh, head banger of a dry return coming back. There's a drunken thread here, which initially dropped the drip going back to the old coal fired snowman. Um, in years past, uh, they put a section here and it goes back and the two drips combine below the water line, turning into a wet return, a very short wet return. And the Harford loop is acting as a water seal, keeping the steam from jumping from one drip to the next. So the drips that were put in at some point, maybe 20 years ago, um, were then tied in with copper and tied in back to the original, or excuse me, the boiler that we just replaced, which is a Well McLean put in, let's say about 20 years ago, and started to fail, and uh, lots of fresh water was added. And the main thing that happened was that when they used the copper connection, uh, copper to steel connections, they used a female pipe adapter similar to that. Now you can get away with a female pipe adapter onto steel. Uh, in this particular case, that's a dialectic union. Uh, but when you add, when you use a female pipe adapter uh, onto a threaded steel unprotected, uh, it just degrades the steel. Well, it took 20 years, but still when I, um, put on my new fittings, the, the threads were in such bad shape that it leaked immediately when I filled it. So we had to replace this entire pipe. And the steel is fine for, for steam. But in this particular case, um, I used all steel. I had unions there because I kind of suspected that was going to happen. So it was relatively sh uh, Short delay, but in February, when you're replacing a boiler, any delay is aggravating. Um, I used stainless close nipples there where it mattered. That's a leftover from the gas pipe. It's galvanized, so when I took it out of service, uh, put it to service there. The copper is going into a brass bushing, which helps again, reduce the uh, corrosion levels and any place where there might be some corrosion, um, I use stainless. Now, stainless works by, it doesn't not rust, it rusts less, it stains less. Uh, they use a nickel chromium um, alloy in there, which forms a passivating layer, I believe it's called passiv passivating. Um, it forms a layer of nickel and chromium oxide, which doesn't flake as much as the regular steel nipple does, exposing more steel for uh, corrosion. The malleable fittings have a high carbon content, uh, perulite, I believe, sort of spherical. And so it also resists the flaking of the uh, and exposing of the iron. Um, so it, it has long lasting um, durability over over the decades. But even so, used a brass bushing there, little little touches to make it uh, make it easier and then plenty of unions for, for servicing and so forth. If you must 
uh, tie on to and you want to use copper as a return, my recommendation would be to use a male adapter and either put a coupling or a union. Um, yeah, there's going to be corrosion, but it's I think it's going to be a little bit more manageable. Uh, just some ideas out there uh, to think about longevity and serviceability um, in the future. I hope you find this video useful. And um, if you do, please hit the like button. Uh, if you have any comments or questions below, I'll try to answer them. Um, and uh, see you on the next one. Be well. Stay safe.